you're about to see one of the most beautiful and unusual chess combinations ever. This game was played between Edelman against Maisel, not for famous players, but the game is once again super fascinating. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov, let's go ahead with the game. It started off with standard moves, one of the most standard openings of all the two knights game. Here white goes knight to g5, trying to attack the f7 pawn with a knight and bishop. And black played a very sudden move, which looks like a terrible blunder, knight takes e4. Not only black ignores the threat to his f7 pawn, but also he seemingly gives up the knight on that square e4. And the, look which, the move which looks so bad for black, in fact, is a super clever trap. And I guarantee that you can win a lot of games, especially Blitz games, if you follow this line as black. I actually have a dedicated video about this, so if you're interested, you can check this out. Now, white here took the pawn of zone, which is a correct move. White cannot win the knight here, because the next move, in this case, black would counterattack, attacking both of the white's minor pieces and therefore taking back one of them. And in this case, let's say if white takes right here and black recaptures, it turns out really well for black, and black is already having an upper hand here. Anyway, let's come back to the actual game. So let me make a few moves back. White didn't go for this line, instead he took the f7 pawn with the bishop, which is a, the correct reaction. Black played king to e7, which is forced, and now into the game white played the most natural move, knight takes e4. And most of your opponents will actually play this move, which is a mistake, even though it's definitely not easy to figure it out, as it looks like the most natural move, and maybe even the only move that white can play. But in reality there are other options for white which are stronger, which is pawn to d3 or pawn to d4, which is actually the strongest response for white. But in this case your opponent has got to be prepared, because the resulting lines are extremely complicated and definitely not easy to find. Just to give you an idea, the best response for white here is pawn to d4 and black should respond pawn to h6. And you can just see that the position is absolutely crazy. And even though, you know, white has an advantage here, but he would have to find a series of very strong, precise moves. And even after that, it's not that black is losing here, it's just that white would get a better position. Uh, just to give you an idea, let's say white plays pawn to d3, which is a simpler option for white. So if you ever face this position as white, you may go for this simpler line, pawn to d3. The idea is that black cannot take this knight here, because in this case, white would recapture with a bishop, which attacks uh, the king as well as the queen and therefore the queen will be captured. So that is not an option for black, let's take this move back. Instead here, black would need to move their knight backwards to f6. Now the white's minor pieces are somewhat hanging, black is ready to push h6 and start capturing these pieces, so white would have to retreat, also creating the, th the threat of knight penetrating here on f7, so black would need to close the diagonal for the bishop by playing pawn to d5. And now it's the end of the forcing line, we can just evaluate the position that because the black skin is misplaced here on e7, white has an advantage, even though the position remains to be unclear, the material balance is equal, black has strong center, is ready to push this knight away by playing pawn to h6 and then hopefully put the king to f7 and finish the development. So I mean, it's still playable for black. Now let's come back to the actual game. I'm sorry for showing you these sub uh, lines here. I hope that it does not confuse you. I just wanted to show you how you can play this position either as white or as black if you ever have to face it. Now, in the game white played knight e4, which most of players actually do, and it is a mistake. Black here takes with the king, t king takes f7. And you can already see that black is ready to now drive this knight away by playing pawn to d5 obtaining these beautiful pawns in the center, and now black starts to counterattack and starts having a fairly good position. White plays pawn to d3 in the game. Um, let me actually show you another beautiful sideline, which is a clever trap and, and a bit funny trap that white can set here. Instead of playing pawn to d3, white could play queen f3 check, which delivers check to the king, and if black chooses here the wrong direction and places their king to g8, which is a losing mistake, White has the sudden move knight to g5, which just wins the game, and is fairly, you know, I'm using. The direct threat is queen to f7, but in addition to that, there is a threat of attacking from this angle, and black cannot stop both of these threats from happening. So, for example, if black would just take the knight here, then queen d5, a quite nice mother checkmate. Coming back to the actual game, white played pawn to d3, black responded pawn to d5, and the knight jumped it to g5, black played king e8, 
In this case, actually, it would be better for black to hide their king in the corner. There is no danger there, and the king would be safer than standing in the center. But anyway, king e8 is more or less okay. White played queen h5. An interesting thing about this opening line is that white player thinks that you're playing weird, dubious moves, and they're trying to punish you for that. They're trying to attack you, but in reality, white has no reason for being aggressive here, and they have no advantage here, actually. So their attack simply fails. Black played g6, now the queen comes back to f3, hoping for queen to f7 checkmate, but it's very easy for black to stop it. He played queen d7, which is a bit of an awkward move, of course, uh, because it blocks the bishop, so it can't come out anymore. Instead, definitely I'd say that black should have closed this line with the bishop. So instead of playing queen to d7 on this awkward move, black could have closed this line with the bishop so that white can't play queen f7. Black probably was worried about the move pawn on g4 trying to drive this bishop away, but in this case, black can save his position and actually start counterattacking with the move knight to d4. Counter blow, and now white is actually in trouble because now the knight attacks the queen, the c2 pawn, and the white's attack fails overall. In the actual game, black opted for queen to d7, which is a bit awkward but still does the job of covering this f7 square so that white cannot play his own queen there. White simply castled now, and black started to go for the counter attack. Knight goes to d4. Attacking the queen and the pawn on c2, so it has to retreat back. Now black goes queen g4, the move which also makes sense, since black's king is still centralized and potentially dangerous for black. Black would love to trade queens going into an endgame where his king is safe. Also, if we trade off the queens, then the black's knight would still renew the threat to the white's pawn on c2 and later on to the rook on a1. Therefore, queen g4 might make sense for black to play. And white also wanted to avoid the queen trade, and he played queen d2. It's quite funny that both of the players keep playing this awkward move, queen to d2. If you remember just a couple of moves ago, black played this symmetric awkward move, queen to d7. I'm not really sure. It looks like an infectious disease to play this move. I mean, if white wanted to stop the exchange, it was enough for white to simply play pawn to f3 and to block this line and kick the black's queen away. Anyway, for some unknown reason in this game, they prefer, instead of this playing queen to d2, black goes pawn to h6, and all of a sudden white realizes that they're actually in a big trouble. The knight on g5 has been attacked, and it cannot go back, because if it goes back to either f3 or h3 doesn't matter, in both cases black has a killer move knight to f3. Take advantage of the pin so that the, pawn, the knight cannot be captured, Th this delivers a fork to the white's king and queen, therefore winning the queen on the next move. So. Driving the knight back is not an option for white, but what could they do instead? Well, not much. White decided to play the move pawn to f3, trying to somehow complicate matters, and black responded with a spectacular move bishop to c5, leaving the queen here under the fire of the pawn, and white decided, well, okay, let me just grab it. So he took the queen, probably thinking that he is winning, and probably thinking that the idea of the black's move bishop to c5 was to deliver this discovered check to the white's king, and after the king goes away, Black would be able to trade, uh, or rather to take the queen here, but that would only trade queens and and would lead to a winning endgame for white. And probably that's what white was expecting to do and was happy about their position, thinking that they are winning. However, in reality, let me take a couple moves back, here, after white captured the queen, instead of going for the white's queen here, black played another move, but first of all, of course, they said this. <laughs> And then he played knight e2, which delivers a double check as well as discover check to the white's king, therefore the king has to go, and now knight g3, another sacrifice, and after the knight is captured, pawn takes g5, and it's a really amusing and spectacular position in every way possible. First of all, the black's rook on h8, which was doing nothing their entire game, finally turned out to be a winning force which delivered a checkmate. Even more so, you can easily notice these five pawns standing in a row on a g-file, which is something you probably never saw in a real game. I mean, normally the pawns, we expect them to stand on a horizontal line, right? Not in a vertical line like this. So that is also something fairly unusual, and which makes this sacrifice so funny. And again, white player probably was thinking just a few moves um, before that, he was probably thinking that he's winning, even though it was a forced checkmate. So really beautiful game. Let me know in the comments below if you really like it and if you think that it's the best combination ever. 
Also, if you want to know how you can find similar combinations yourself, let me invite you to join my free masterclass by clicking the link on the screen or down below in the description.